Hey, it's Ted here from New England Tech. I'm in the Marine Department, the diesel lab. I wanted to go over a little bit more about um, one of the diesel engines, an older one. It's a TAMD 31 P-A engine. Uh, I'll show you the uh, ID tag as well. So the ID tag on this uh, 31 series engine is located on the port side. Down here, here's the fuel filter and it's over here on the side of the block. Um, another thing about Volvo is when you look at their ID tags, you'll have the model number first. So that'll say the model TMD31 P-A. And then you have a uh, 34 dash number 34690.72. That's the actual part number. So that's the part number for the engine that identifies the entire engine. And then of course, to order parts, the best way to always order parts is by serial number, do a serial number search. So those three pieces of information are real critical for these engines, especially the older ones when you're trying to order parts. It's an older mechanical Volvo Penna four-cylinder diesel engine. Um, similar to the six cylinders, it has um, some things about it that I'd like to talk about that are you know, sometimes troublesome to technicians and maybe this will help you out. So let's get started. So this is a lab engine and we've done some work on it obviously over the years. Um, and one of the things I've had, you know, conversations with techs and been out to boats and I've rebuilt these pumps a lot. And I had one where um, they were uh, having some troubles with it, trying to figure out why that it wasn't, you know, why it was overheating. They had, you know, somebody had previously put a new pump on it and um, they ended up, you know, not realizing, but the, the pump is in, you can invert the pump. You can put it on upside down, which means I can unbolt it and I can flip it over and put it on upside down. What that does, that just moves this hose over a little bit and this hose over a little bit. Now it doesn't pump water. So, you know, the telltale thing is if it's upside down, just look at the Volvo Penna insignia on the cover and it'll be upside down if the pump's upside down. It's one of the These engines do not have anodes in them. So if you're looking for anodes in the heat exchanger and in the after cooler, they did not put them in. Um, these are strictly just drains for the raw water side and the same thing on the, the after cooler. Now, one of the other things that I've run into is the technician saying, you know, the engine and when I accelerate, it has a lot of black smoke and then the black smoke clears up. And the owner said that didn't happen last year. Um, these engines are fully mechanical, so it has a mechanical pump on it, um, it has a stop solenoid on it, and it also has a stop lever on it. So you have both ways to shut it off, either electrically or, you know, mechanically. The issue with an engine that accelerates and has black smoke, and you may run into a situation where this is a uh, basically what it is is an aneroid device and it's called a smoke limiter or a puff limiter. Um, this device is on the injection pump and it is designed to limit the amount of fuel on a low RPM acceleration. So if you first are at idle and you bring the boat out and then you just, you know, hammer the throttle, obviously because it's turbocharged, you know, the turbochargers isn't going isn't gonna to boost real quick. You're not going to get the boost pressure. So the aneroid is physically holding the fuel back in the pump. It's preventing full fuel delivery during acceleration. There's this hose that runs off of it, and it's a hard plastic hose. It's not a steel hose, it's hard plastic. And it runs over to a fitting that goes into the intake. So until boost pressure builds in the intake manifold, this aneroid is designed to hold the fuel back. Now, if the um, engine is black smoking on acceleration, it could be that this has either got a ruptured diaphragm in it or maybe this hose is damaged. So, and I got a teardown engine over here, I'll show you. You know, and here's the hose that comes off of it. And lo and behold, if you look, you know, this is split. So now if this is kinked or split or broken, that's gonna prevent the boost pressure from going into the aneroid, which is not gonna work properly. So then what you're gonna have is when you do accelerate the engine, you're gonna get that black smoke. So that's something simple to look for, look for that, okay? These are um, set at the factory. There should be no reason that you make any adjustments on them. 
They are replaceable. You can replace this unit. So I want to pressure test this after cooler. Here's another thing. If you want to pressure test it real easy, take these two hoses off, take a piece of hose or one of them, and loop it around and tie it to the other side. So you basically tie this hose together, and that blocks the whole raw water side together. So the core inside, okay, that has raw water running through it, also has this drain for the raw water. So what I've done is I've taken the original drain out and I put a barbed nipple on it. And then I take that and I attach that to a lower unit pressure tester, like for an outdrive or outboards. Pressurize it up to about 10 PSI. And what that does is that pressurizes the raw water side of the core. And if the gauge goes down, then you know the core is no good. Um, when you're gonna replace the core, there is some bolts on the, the front of it don't touch these bolts because this is glued together. And as you can see, a student already did that and broke one of the bolts off. So we put some epoxy in here. Top cover comes off, core comes out. You have to take the drain out first. You push up a little bit with a board and you can pop that core right out and change that core. There is an O-ring, a, a neoprene O-ring in here. I would order a new O-ring too and order the core and change that. So that's another little trick for you. Final one is over here back on the runner. And we, uh, you know, wanted to know about, is the turbocharger working? Is it dragging? Okay, I took the air cleaner off. I've spun the turbocharger. I've wiggled it. You know, I've checked my end play, axial play. I checked my radial play. But the engine still is, you know, black smoking. When I get up to higher RPM, it doesn't develop full power. So I want to measure boost pressure. Now, the little cool trick is... We've got the boost pressure gauge kit from Volvo Penna. Nice liquid filled gauge, works great. Comes with a little adapter for a quick connect like an air chuck fitting. You might need to change that air chuck fitting. Not a, you know, not a big deal to do. Put yours and get a regular male air chuck fitting on here. Okay, quick connect. And what I did was, I do this on live engines, is I'm gonna take one of these plugs out and I've got an extra one, so what I do is I bring it with me if I know I'm going to do that. Take this plug out, put this one in. Now what I did was I took this one out of the engine, and I drilled a hole in it, obviously off the engine, and I threaded it to the pipe thread that will fit that air chuck fitting. And that gives me a quick way to take this out, thread the air chuck fitting in there, hook that up, and then I can run the boat and run it up to speed and check the book to see if I have the correct boost pressure. Um, and that's a quick way to actually do the adaption without buying the special adapter that they sell. Um, and if you have that ability to do that, you could also take one of these plugs out as well, and you could thread in a, um, you know, a temperature sender, and you could hook up like a gauge or some type of parameter to it. Because you want to know what your, um, if the after cooler is actually cooling the air down. So if the air is getting too hot in here, you know, you can monitor that as well. That's another addition. Obviously, we all have infrared temp guns, engines running at full speed. You know, check your, your temperature coming into the intake manifold going into the engine because you can't have a clogged um, after cooler. If the after cooler is clogged, it's gotten filled up with sand or something like that, it may let enough coolant go through it, but it's going to definitely overheat the air. That's going to limit your boost pressure too. There is not a sensor for that. Um, temperature on these mechanical engines on the on the uh, newer you know EDC engines they do have a temperature sensor on them so if we come over here and I've got a, a KMD 300 over here this is the EDC version so this is the six cylinder big brother to the three liter this is the four liter version so this is a, um, an EDC engine, and right away you know it's an EDC engine because it's got the processor on it. And this engine does have boost pressure sensors on it. It has boost temperature sensors on it, so it will set codes for that as well. So these engines, again, if you wanted to check boost pressure against the sensor, you could do the same thing. They have the same plugs in them, which is really nice. So I'm hoping that gives you a little bit of insight on you know, the differences uh, and some of the things, and again, here's the same raw water pump used on this, you know, EDC engine. And we're gonna, I'm gonna do a video on the electronic side of the EDC platform. I've got this old remote control system set up here. I can hinge it up and I teach this method, you know, of teaching 
the uh, push button panel and the dashboard and diagnostics on this here at the college as well. So um, this one has got the supercharger on it that has the belt driven supercharger with a centrifugal clutch on it. If you have any other questions, you know, on the EDC engines, the older um, EDC diesels, you know, the four liters and the seven liters, um, just let me know, you know, put a message up in the uh, message board and I'll see if I can't make a video of that. But um, anybody out there that, you know, enjoys the video, hit the subscribe button. And, you know, if you're looking for some education in the marine world, um, we definitely do have uh, a great program here. I'd love to see you in class. There's a whole bunch of people calling me uh, looking for help all over the nation. So, you know, just look us up online, newenglandtech.com, you know, and just check out the Marine Department. Uh, hope to talk to you soon. A TAMD 31 P-A engine. Uh, I'll show you the uh, ID tag as well.